All righty, Jake Stewart back with the National Sports Media Association. Today, I'm joined by Delaware Sportscaster of the Year, Gary Lang. Gary, thank you so much for being here today. Happy to do it. So this is your first award, Gary. You've been a sportscaster for over 50 years. So what does this mean to you? This is so awesome. It really is. Um, it's, it's kind of a recognition, I guess, of perseverance, staying in for that long, uh, and, and also uh, a recognition by a lot of people that I know around the state having worked that long. They've worked many years, too. We've shared press boxes, and uh, they gave me their votes, and I appreciate that. And Gary, for some of your background, just, just for some people that might not know as well, you were the Heritage Sports Radio Network play-by-play -play for 10 years, um, and, and you cover high school, college, semi-pro. Uh, can you tell a little bit more uh, as to what brought you into the industry? It, it was a kid's dream to be a play-by-play -play announcer. Uh, it was always a part-time job until a few years ago. Um, it was always something I did on the side. I was uh, a radio announcer, did news, did DJ work. Uh, did play-by-play -play on Friday nights of high school football, uh, moved into advertising sales, but always did Friday night high school football, and then got involved with the cable company, and we were televising high school football and some local college games. It just kept my hand in it all those years, and, and I'm fortunate that uh, it's been 52 successive years that I've done at least one game in each of those seasons. Um, then uh, a couple of years ago, I uh, retired from my full-time job. Now it gives me a little bit more time to prepare broadcasts, uh, prepare for the games that I'm going to work, and also a little more travel time when the teams go on the road. Previously, it was difficult. I had a job where I was considered an essential employee in an emergency management agency. If there was bad weather or some kind of a situation coming up, I had to say, I can't go and do that game because my primary job took precedence. Now I have that freedom that I can uh, go and, and go where I want to go and, and do what I want to do. That's awesome. That's great. I'm sure you've seen some pretty, pretty wild games, some cool memories. Do you have something that you would say stands out as far as either a best game or a best memory from over the years? Oh, I, I've seen games that have been ended early by fights. Um, I've, I've seen uh, games that have gone multiple overtimes. Um, probably last fall, uh, we had a football game, Delaware State University against Norfolk State. State uh, next to the last game of the season, they were in the running for the conference title. And Delaware State uh, was scrambling to at least try to get a 500 season out of it with a lot. Uh, I think the record at that point was uh, uh, four and five. Uh, I can't recall now. It was last November. Uh, but they pulled off the upset. And it was one of those games that went right down to the last minute. Uh, it was an exciting game. Those are the kind that, that really are fun to work. And as a Delaware State grad, um, and I've done a lot of Delaware State games over the years, you start to feel an affinity for the team. So you really get excited when they're pulling off a game like that. I'm sure. I'm the, sure. That's probably the most recent one that stands out. Now, with, with Delaware being a state that doesn't have as many uh, professional sports teams, does that just mean that the high school teams and some of those college teams are, are that much more uh, paid attention to out there? Yeah, it, it does. Um, there, of course, is a, a team in the northern part of the state that's in the G League uh, for pro basketball. Uh, there's a minor league hockey team in the central part of the state. And, of course, there's the uh, single A baseball team uh, in the northern part of the state. So, yeah, uh, the college has become a little more important. Uh, there are only three colleges that have intercollegiate sports, uh, Delaware State and the University of Delaware being the two primary ones. So they get a lot of press attention as well. Uh, high school football uh, was always very big. Friday nights were, were the place you wanted to go, especially uh, in the downstate, uh, the, the two lower counties, or just three counties here. If, if uh, you didn't go to the high school football game on Friday night, you probably had no connection at all to it. Uh, the small towns, the local high schools, we're seeing now that, that some of that that attendance, some of that interest has waned a little bit as we've had areas that grow and people have moved in from outside the area. Uh, it used to be that you'd see a, a young fellow out there playing high school football and you knew his dad played for that team and his grandfather played for that team at some point. Now, uh, some of it, uh, that traditional connection isn't there. They'll get the big crowds and a lot of excitement. No, like speaking of that traditional connection, I know, you know, with COVID coming in these past couple of years, I'm sure that also 
kind of change it a little bit. How much has COVID changed your work, would you say, as a, as a sportscaster? It's very difficult in an empty stadium or an empty uh, gym uh, where maybe the, the most, you, you know, you can now hear the ball thudding on the court. Uh, you can hear the plays being called by the quarterback without a parabolic microphone because there's no sound <laughs> to drown it out. Um, I always say that basketball is a little more exciting to do because you're sitting courtside you get all of that flow of energy from the fans behind you. When there are no fans behind you, it's quite different. And it uh, changes sometimes your, your pacing and your tempo and uh, some of the excitement of the game. Right, right. And I'm sure there's a lot more, more Zooms like these as well, too, <laughs> throughout the industry. Um, yeah. Just cutting down interviews and whatnot, I'm sure, too. Um, yeah, fortunately, I haven't been in the situation where some people have been where they're in one place and the game's being played hundreds of miles away and they're doing it off a video screen. I'm not wow. sure I could do that. I'm not <laughs> sure tough. I could do that. That's they have a to have a different... very large video screen for me as well. Right, to be able to right. Pick everything out. <laughs> right. Well, I wanted to ask you too. I, I know there's there's plenty of uh, uh, future sportscasters like myself watching this right now. And what what advice do you have for for people just getting into the industry? Practice. Um, even if you're not actually on the air, uh, take your, your set recorder. If you're out of my generation or your, your smartphone that has a recording feature, get out there and, and sit courtside and practice it. I, I can recall sitting in my high school gym watching basketball games and my friends wondering why I was uncharacteristically quiet. And in my head, I was doing the play by play. Um, <laughs> as I said before, a kid's dream come true. Um, I'll just practice every chance you get and then look for that opportunity. Um, mine came about here in Delaware simply by saying to the program director of the radio station one day in August, asked him if, if they do high school football. And he said, yes. I said, if you ever need any help on those games, I've done some play by play. Uh, I'd love to do some more. And he said, what are you doing Friday night? I need a color commentator on our game. And I said, you got it. Um, <laughs> He came back 10 minutes later and asked me if I could do the entire season. Uh, he had previously wow. been sending out some of the DJs just to set up the equipment and provide maybe a bridge on the commercials, but not doing much color. So I got my entree here in Delaware simply by saying, are you doing anything like that? Find the opportunities. Um, there are many more opportunities than when I started because of television now, cable, and uh, things that have come along where you can do something local or regional. Look for those opportunities. Make your connections. Do your network. That's awesome. That's great advice. Practicing and saying yes to the opportunities, things that all of us could can do a little bit more. Well, Gary, thank you so much for your time today. We hopefully look forward to seeing you this summer uh, at the award ceremony in Winston-Salem. Um, thank you again for coming on today. Thank you, Jake.